Hello and welcome to the quick video about setting up a rangefinder in iNav. Now this plane is currently running iNav 7.0 but I've installed this for when iNav 7.1 comes out. Specifically because adding a rangefinder allows you to use the automated landing feature that's coming in iNav 7.1. However, adding rangefinders onto fixed wing is not something that's new to me. I've done it quite a lot for RD Pilot. RD Pilot has been using rangefinders properly to help give you a very accurate height measurement for quite a long time. Now, in this model, I'm using a TF Mini Plus rangefinder. It's about 50 pounds. Um, I got this one from 3DXR. And the reason that I've got this is that some of the other rangefinders that you'll come across that you can use in the hobby only have a couple of meters range. This thing has up to 10, 12 meters is what it reckons on the packaging. However, in most light conditions, it'll easily do 10 meters. 10 meters is a pretty high height. You know, 12 meters is about 40 feet. So as the plane comes into land with the automated landing feature in iNav 7.1, as soon as it gets under about 35 feet, it's going to be able to accurately see exactly how high it is. So why do you need a range finder? Well, the automated landing feature that's coming in iNav 7.1 doesn't strictly need something like a rangefinder on it. But if you have one, then the last part of the approach is slightly different. Rather than it being just a glide into the ground, it'll actually flare so you can push the nose up a little bit and kind of reduce the speed so it falls into the ground in a much more graceful way because it knows exactly how high it is. So the reason that this is a benefit is that most of the height that you're doing when you're flying with iNav is coming from the GPS information of the height and the height that was stored at the home location. And also if you have it enabled, the barometer as well. The issue is with a barometer is things get warmer inside the body of the model and the center itself gets warmer on the flight controller that affects the reading. Similarly, if you're flying for a reasonable period of time, the barometric pressure of the air actually changes too. That's what high and low pressure is talking all about. So as the pressure changes, as the day warms up or gets colder or a cold or hot front comes into your flying area, that's going to affect how high the barometer thinks you are. And over time, that difference can be quite significant enough to give a couple of meters difference or error in height. However, having something like a range finder on the bottom means that the INAF plane can see exactly how high it is. Now, I would recommend that you use one of these sensors here. I've used them on loads of different planes, I've already said. Again, I'll put a link down below if you want to buy one. They're about £50, but they are worth it. They are pretty rock solid. So I thought I'd make this very quick video in anticipation of getting ready to do all this and just explain how easy it is to set this up. You need a spare UART on your flight controller. And then what you need to do is you need to go into the ports tab, go into the peripherals and set it up as a range finder. Once you have done that in the ports tab, save that, then go into the configuration tab and select Bennywake as the type of range finder that you're gonna install. Save that and disconnect it. Then I would connect the range finder to the UART. I'm using UART 6, which is positioned here on the flight controller for this particular setup. And then once it is all plugged in, make sure that the plus five volts and ground are the right way around and make sure that the receive pin goes to the transmit pin on the TF Mini Plus. As usual, standard stuff when you're putting all this stuff together and then power it from the battery. You'll find that the flight controller will not power the range finder until it has battery power. Once the flight controller is booted, plug it back to iNav. When you connect, you'll see in the top, nice blue symbol. That means the range finder is both powered and connected correctly. And then if you go into the sensor tab, turn on the sonar pieces, as you raise and lower the plane on the table, you will see the range finder is accurately measuring the distance from the table that the plane's on as you lift it up. What you'll probably find with this particular sensor is that under about 10 centimeters is kind of the minimum height that it can detect. So you'll have that little kind of wavy variance. As soon as you kind of lift it up, 
then you will get a very, very accurate measurement. Now, the performance of things like this really depends on the kind of thing you're flying over. So some surfaces like concrete and stuff will be read far more accurately than if you're flying over something like very fluffy, overgrown grassy areas, but it's still going to be very useful. Now, in terms of actually installing this into the model, uh, it wasn't too tricky. I have actually designed a 3D printable mount for it that, and also a little kind of shell that goes on the outside. You can use that guide to cut out exactly the size of the hole that you need on the bottom of the plane. Make sure the center is pointing directly downwards because obviously that's the way it's going to work. And then I just glued it into place with some Yoohoo pour. Once that had gone off, then I pushed the center into place. It's a push fit and used a couple of dabs of hot glue just to make sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. And then made sure that everything was all working. Once it's all working, then you can put it on the desk, power it, check it with INF configurator, and you'll find as you raise and lower the plane, you can see that value changing in that sensor tab, and that means that everything is working perfectly. Only a couple of things to kind of draw your attention to about this. First and foremost is this is a serious sensor. This is going to be sending out using a laser LED some serious pulses of light to measure the height. Be aware of that. Do not look directly at this when you are flying. Some of the cheaper things like the Matek units that only detect a couple of meters it's less of an issue. I still wouldn't look at those directly either, but this is kind of a proper serious LiDAR that professionals use. The other thing as well is that it has to be powered in order for it to work. If you set it up and you don't power it from the battery, when you connect with INF configurator, here at the top, it'll appear red. If it appears red, it's probably either not powered from the battery or you haven't mixed the transmit and receive pins going from the sensor to the flight controller. So swap those over. Last thing I would say is just make sure that the plane is nice and level on the bench when you're doing all this and the flight controller is sat as though it's going to be flying. Have heard of issues where people have been messing around with this and the flight controller is upside down and they're trying to use the range finder when it is pointing up in the air, but the flight controller is upside down. I personally would test it on the bench first, plug it into your flight controller and have it pointing at the ceiling, configure it, make sure it all works. And only then when you're happy it works, get out the X-Acto knife and cut the recess for the 3D printable mounts that I have on here. Uh, I'll put links down below to this mount that I've designed and also the guide that goes with it too, which will allow you to cut out the exact right size. But stay tuned, I will be doing a video on the iNav automated landing stuff when it comes out and we can actually put this to the test. But now this has both the barometer, the GPS, and also a LiDAR rangefinder on the belly, then it's set up to do all of that testing. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.